thank you for um, having me here. And uh, I am going to talk to you today a little bit about my work across different media. So I work in painting and drawing, a little bit of sculpture and photography. Um, I'm also going to show some images of the work as well as stuff that inspired me. So um, I was born in Brooklyn and I lived between Queens and Brooklyn until I went to college. Um, my parents immigrated here from India and um, after I finished college, I uh, taught junior high school and high school for several years. And then I went back to graduate school. And then I decided that I can be an artist because there was a big question about whether I should or not, because I wasn't, I think my parents weren't so excited about that as an option for my career. So then I was feeling torn, but then I decided to try it. And I taught and made art together for some years. And now, I'm right now just working on my artwork, but I'm sure that um, I will also teach again. So um, just to go through my work, the image that you see here is uh, actually drawn directly on the wall. So a lot of my work, um, I do come murals. These are some of the first images that I remember seeing. These are from a calendar that was made in 1978 when I was three. Um, these are images from TV shows about underwater sea life and I uh, loved wildlife and nature stuff. So I'm just showing you a few things that inspire me and these are paintings for movie posters that I saw a lot of um, when I would be in India. So I lived there for a year when I was little and then I visited every summer with my family or every other summer depending. Um, and these, the image that I'm showing you right now, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but um, this is an image of the uh, Hindu goddess called Kali. And uh, she's supposed to be a divine force and one of the few images where you can get to see the goddess angry. So it's most of the other ones are representations that are more like the Virgin Mary where she's like calm and there's a halo and but um, this is an image that um, also inspired me. So a lot of my work is um, interested in mythology and stories, fairy tales, folk tales. Um, I like that because um, I like the idea of these stories that I read when I was a kid and I, I think they're very interesting because myths and folk tales and fairy tales are human beings way of trying to understand who are we, why are we here, what are we doing, where did we come from, what's right and what's wrong, how are we supposed to be acting in society and what's going to happen to us if we don't listen or we disobey the rules. So those are some things that um, I'm interested in about mythology. Um, these, these ideas of trying to understand where we came from and um, also for me to think more about um, Indian culture and images that I had seen were some of the first things that uh, I looked at when I started painting. So I was trained as a painter, like this kind of painting, and uh, representational, large-scale, oil and acrylic. Um, the actual painting would be uh, a little bit bigger than this. So most of my work is pretty large-scale. And these images are images that I found um, in travel brochures about India from the 80s, and then I was interested in just mixing them up and putting them together in a different way. What I did was I also was interested in, like I would cut pictures out of newspapers and magazines and a lot of my work came from um, clipping and rearranging these images together. Um, so I worked in this vein for a while and then I moved to, I made a pretty big change in my work and I started to work directly on the wall. So it was still figurative and it was still about these ideas of mythology and um, I wanted to try to do something that I felt like was more free. 
Another thing that I was also inspired by when I was growing up was art that I would see on the street and the subways and things that looked very spontaneous. So um, these were some of the length, like graffiti and line art drawings that you would see people did on the um, on doorways with stencils and these are some of the things that inspired me. Also the materials here like the red flowers and all of the stuff on the floor these are like um, items that you could find in a 99 cent store and actually the red stuff is stuff that people would cover their rug with. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that or your furniture with. So um, I wanted to use materials that are from our everyday life, but in a different way. And then you can see that it's done directly in the wall because you can see it's actually a room and a house because there's an outlet there and um, it was a fun project. So I got to do that and then I did two pieces where there's an inside and then an outside. So when you stepped out, you would see this. This is um, a huge, gigantic underwear um, and it, it was inspired by um, a story that I read where there was a goddess who was enormous and really unattractive and <coughs> had many legs and stuff. And she needed to, she really had a crush on the hero of this story. So she disguised herself as a skinny, um, light skinned woman. And then she started flirting with him. And then he found out. And then he, chopped off her nose and her ears and her eyes. And, st and then it started this whole um, crazy battle story, this epic. But that moment where she tries to um, make an advance to him and he rejects it by um, basically like disfiguring her is something that we don't know a lot about in the story. So a lot of my work is interested in thinking about stories that are very popular um, in different cultures, and then the parts of them that remain kind of underground or missing. So, um, This is another painting that, um, these are different kinds of paintings from the 20s and the 30s in India, um, where they show things, both mythological things, like this is a God and a monkey kind of wrestling together. And then this is a barber cleaning a woman's ear. So I like to put together, um, these are inspiring to me because I like the idea of very normal everyday things, some of which we might even think of as gross. And then really um, amazing moments like these two gods coming together. And then this is actually an invitation for a cultural event that I went to, but I just wanted to show you how these things are both in fine art and in really ancient art, and then they come into everyday life. So um, this is another work that I did on the wall. The text says, um, wondering why she abandoned her armor like a monkey eating its own heart. And um, these, this piece, as well as the piece that comes after it, were inspired by this Indian um, warrior queen. Well, she was just a queen, and then she had to defend her land against the British, but she was 19. So she was kind of like a Joan of Arc, and they don't know a lot about her, and then she died in battle. So this was just imagining, thinking about her, and not about drawing her or what it really would look like, but being inspired by some of the things that I had read about her. So it's drawing on the wall. This one, would, this one was about the size of this wall behind you, like right there. And um, the materials here, so it's pen and ink, and then the materials like these roses here are like roses you would find that, I don't know if you saw the ladies, they have like plastic bags with flowers on them on the subway and they're carrying their stuff. This is, these are cut out from those. These are shower curtains. Um, <clears throat> these are the rug runners, you know, the thing you would cover your rug with. Wrapping paper, marbles, all everyday materials. And what I hope to do is use stuff like this that you would have seen somewhere, maybe not in an art context, to kind of try to bring the viewer in. And there's something that's familiar about it, but unfamiliar at the same time. 
So these were supposed to be like lily pads. That's what that's a detail of. Um, so I used this material both on the wall, which is this previous image here, right? And then I also um, started doing more works on paper, but they have three-dimensional elements. Like these are eyeballs and leaves that are actually coming out of the drawing. And then you can see the marbles and the beads and the glitter and stuff that um, is part of the work. So it's like some, it incorporates some sculpture and some drawing. And then I was very inspired by working with kids because they love, um, like younger kids who like to work with glitter and clay and bright things. And so a lot of my interest in my materials also came from that. Um, so this is another work that's in that vein. And um, this one is like 10 by 20 feet. So this was at the Queen's Museum of Art. And um, this is a detail of it. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with um, the story of Hercules, but um, so there's this part where he has to kill this monster called the Hydra. Did you guys, anybody saw the Hercules, like the Disney Hercules? Okay, good. So he's gonna kill the monster and um, he tries to chop its head off and then every time he chops his head off, more heads grow. So I was thinking about that in relationship also to like things that are happening in our world today, like the way, um, the way terrorism or crime or things like that are, are fought and how they're dealt with and how um, just trying to deal with it with violence actually makes the whole problem grow and multiply. So that was something that was in my head when I was making this. Um, and then I had to stand on a cherry picker, which is a um, electric ladder when I was doing this piece and I had to go up and down because it was really high. And then I was working late at night and then one night I got stuck on the top of the thing and then I had to slide down like as if I was on a, like, as if I was a fireman or I don't know, that's what I imagined. So, um, and I actually find those parts of the work to be fun too. So this is another mural that I did in, in Houston, Texas. Um, and this one is um, about 13 by 45 feet. So there's hair in this work. Um, oh, you can't see it there, but there's um, e extension hair that I braided into long braids with wires. And um, these things right here are fishing bait that you would put on your fishing uh, rod to catch something. These are bicycle reflectors and stickers. So it's more of the everyday material in the piece. Just wanted to talk a little bit about this thing on the bottom right here. It's a line drawing and it's called a column. There are actually some versions of it in the Caribbean too, but what you do is you make that with flour and water and you put it at the front of your doorstep and it's supposed to guard against either the evil eye or um, kind of bless your house or keep your safe uh, space safe. So um, I'm interested in this because it's a line drawing also, and it's also site specific, which means that it's done in that place. You guys probably know that, but, um, and it's done every day. So once the day is over, you just wash it off with water and then redo it. And similarly, a piece like this one that you see here, once the show was over, it was just painted over. So this is the only version of that artwork that still exists. I'm gonna show you some photography work too. So this is, um, remember the warrior queen I was telling you about two minutes ago? This is actually me trying to make a representation of her. Because when I tried to look for an image of her, this is what I found. So in this one, it looks weird. They obviously did something to her neck and her face. And then in this one, um, she looks like an old guy and they're really different. So, so I felt like um, there was a gap there. There was something missing and I wanted to try and recreate it. I wanted to try and use art to fill in the gaps about history and culture that were missing for me. So I made this armor suit with um, cardboard and tin foil. 
uh, aluminum foil and duct tape and hot glue and um, binder fasteners like those right there. Put your reports together with. And then a Frisbee. And um, yeah, that was it. So um, this costume came and then I took this photograph which um, actually a lot of my photographs, um, a lot of my work happens in Brooklyn, but then a few of the photographs that I'm showing you are taken in Prospect Park, such as this one. So I'm interested in sort of filling in the gaps around uh, history, but also personal history too. So this is an artwork that I did um, where I tried to recreate the moment where my mom died and I found her in the bathroom. So I took um, things from the bathroom and the clothes that she wore on the, way, on the day that she died and then I put myself in the position where I found her because um, I think that a lot of times we experience events that are really powerful but we don't have nobody else saw it or it's it's hard to visualize and I think one of the great things about being a visual artist is actually um, putting some kind of an image to those experiences that are hard to talk about or think about. So these are some of the comic works. These are inspired by actual comics that I read when I was a kid along with Archie and X-Men. So these are the actual comics. These are the comics that I made. Basically I took I took some of the images and then I drew, I drew into them um, and I also wrote my own text. So it's kind of surreal and more like poetry. There's a lot more images of this on my website so you can see more of them there. Um, so they range in content from being more traditional to being like very explicit and graphic. In this and in my wall drawings, text is an important part of my work. So I write all of the text and it's almost like uh, writing poetry and doodling and bringing those together. So this is made out of pipe cleaners and um, it's like a hanging text poem. So it's pipe cleaners and fishing wire, shower curtain. And this one, is made out of hair, braided hair, and uh, broken glass. So I'm also showing you some work that I've done collaboratively because um, I love to work with people as well as on my own stuff. And these, um, this series of work I'm showing you is like a work that I did with an artist named Mariam Ghani, who's also in Brooklyn. And it's around all of the um, detention and deportation and different changes that happen in our landscape after 9-11. So I made this installation where I basically did watercolors, pictures of people who were either missing, arrested, deported, detained, um, questioned, and I was inspired by this, which is the kind of thing that I saw all over New York City after September 11th when I would be commuting, which is missing people flyers of the people who died in the World Trade Center. And then at the same time, all of these other people were also going missing because the government was feeling very scared about um, thinking lots of people were terrorists who were not, and then not catching the terrorists. So these are some of the details of that. And then we made a library where we put all of those images together and also collected posters, which you see here, which we collected from protests and information, and had that be part of the artwork. Um, this is written with broken glass, and it says no human being is illegal, and all of the text in this piece is like uh, different kind of protest slogans. These are parts of the piece. We also made neon signs that we put up. Um, on 10th Avenue in Manhattan where there's a lot of taxis so people could see a drive-by art um, and hopefully think about it. Um, this is another collaborative project I did. It's like a family tree, a fun fake family tree for queer people, gay people. Um, so I worked with like a health organization and all these artists and the Queens Museum. So we collected photos like these 
of people in your family that were gay or people you knew that were gay or yourself. And then writers wrote little stories about um, these people and then um, put them back into this family tree kind of um, template that we made where all of the pieces of the tree are actually photographed from the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens and then reassembled. And then the, and then the poster was um, on bus stops all over Queens because I don't know if any of you are from Queens or familiar with it, but the bus is the big way to move around. So um, not so much with the subway. So um, it was a way to try to use art to get people interested in talking about AIDS and um, immigration and different issues without making a poster that was very scary and that was like, if you do this, you're going to die. And then nobody pays attention. So, um, and then a lot of my images are also inspired by Bollywood movies, Hindi movies, and things I read in the news. This is a piece called, this is an image that of a high school kid who became known as the lyrical terrorist because she was writing these poems about war and death. And then she actually got prosecuted by the British government as a potential terrorist. And it was a big case in the news. So, um, and these are images of movie stars from Indian movies that I saw when I was younger. Okay, I'm gonna move faster. Um, this, is, this is an image that I did that was a collaboration with a fashion photographer who's a friend of mine. She was like doing her portfolio and um, it's all fake, by the way. It's just makeup and I, it was makeup that I bought from Party City and then we just put it together and um, so, yeah. It was a, trying to incorporate my art materials into a portrait. So these are more photographic images that I took um, of a revolutionary figure that I was inspired by that I read about in history. So this is me. And then I did the mask. And then I made this costume with all these eyeballs and um, tried to imagine this person escaping instead of being hung like he was hung and he died. So he was also a freedom fighter. Um, have you guys heard of Gandhi? The, yes. yes, right? So he was, he was at the same time as Gandhi and his contemporary, but people didn't like him because he also supported violence as a possible means for freedom. And then eventually he was um, hung at the gallows because um, they tried him for sedition. So, and he was also very young. So um, this was just me imagining if the guy was, would like wake up from the dead or kind of escape or something like that. And um, these were also in Prospect Park. 